so today just collected from its uh, owner we've got this later cold war era air raid siren control panel you can see it's made by uh, gec controls uh, there's a few others of the original markings on the side there uh, not a lot to say on the outside of this panel this is this main isolator switch um, an isolator switch with the heater control panels uh, and a pilot lamp there that which would have uh, showed that the panel was live uh, this is still in the original condition where the uh, demolition contractor had taken it out so got the original cut off armored cable there that would have gone to the air raid siren uh, and another cable there that would have gone up to the heater plates and the end of the siren uh, we'll just uh, open it up so I'll pop that off that's another job as you can see the uh, isolator itself needs a bit of work there uh, so if we open it up uh, as we can see all the original uh, incoming outgoing cables are here they've just been uh, cut off where it was taken out so we'll just move the uh, some of them out of the way so that was the main three phase supply coming into the isolator um, we have got the original wiring diagram on this one again although there is some handwritten alterations on here at the top so it looks like some alterations were made when it was in service so we'll just follow some of this through first so we've got the main uh, isolator there that's the main incoming uh, free phase supply fuses there so that would have then got out and distributed between the rest of the fuses uh, doing the various functions at the top there we've got the usual selection of spare cartridge fuses although on this one we do have two spare main siren contactors so we can see the one that's wired in in service there uh, and if that had had a fault uh, they could have easily have changed it over on site without having to bring one along uh, so if we follow the uh, wiring diagram here we can see the main incoming power coming to the to the isolator and it goes out to our first switches and then we can just work out what everything else is doing here so luckily they are all uh, numbered these fuses so f4 uh, is marked as spare on the plan as again we can see there's nothing connected to that uh, f5 and 6 were both marked as spare but we can see f5 has been connected up and that's to do with this uh, handwritten alteration up here so this was for the uh, pilot light so it looks like that was a later addition added uh, f7 uh, is marked up on the plan as push button uh, I and mean, if we follow the cabling through the uh, connector blocks here it actually comes out uh, in these cut off cables here so I think the test button was a separate unit to this panel um, and again the uh, post office equipment that would be WB 1400 um, would also have come through there so we'll have a look at all that a bit later uh, so F8 uh, next to it that is marked up as PO equipment so that's for the remote control start F9 through to 11 are our main siren uh, fuses so one for each of the three phases and the last one on the end there F12 is marked up as heater so that's for our heater power supply uh, so if we just follow some of this through here we can see we've got the main neutral bus here and this was the original uh, main neutral which is cut off there um, we've got the cables coming out here which was the actual siren output so that was going up to the air raid siren uh, and then we've got another small connector here which is to do with our heater plate power supplies which are these cables here so I have noticed um, on the heater power supplies as well as going up to the isolator and back down there is actually a heater power supply cable coming out to this side here with all the external equipment so I believe this may have been wired into a later style remote control start uh, which I'll just show you a picture of one now so during the later Cold War we had these uh, WB1400 receiver signalling by uh, British Telecom here. So this was the remote start uh, box which would have been mounted next to the siren cabinet. Uh, but after the uh, stand down um, at the end of the Cold War, the WB system was shut down. But some sirens were still required um, for flood sirens. So they needed to put a new kind of remote start unit on it. And I believe the panel uh, that we're working on at the moment may have been hooked up to one of these uh, at the end of its life, uh, which was the Mini M siren receiver. So just because we've got that extra heater uh, cable coming out to the sort of post office side of the panel, and as we can see on here, we have got a heater uh, remote start function on here as well as the uh, siren start on here so at some point i would like to get this unit powered up and running i've had this one in my collection for a little while um so uh that will probably be a later on job and we can uh 
try actually getting it running off of the uh, remote signal if we can find out what frequency it ran on. So the plan going forward uh, with this control panel, we're going to strip out some of these uh, cut-off cables here. Uh, we can see the uh, remote control start and the test button push switch are all wired on here on the blue phase. Uh, and again, that does seem to be the uh, phase that's supplying the uh, siren contactor. So we'll be able to put a 240 volt supply onto the blue phase there and should be able to test the contactor functions. Um, and we will wire on a test key switch, so that'll be able to be uh, activated by the owner when they want to sound the sirens. And it will eventually be hooked up to a free phase supply on their site. So we've just about got this panel uh, ready to uh, run up and test now. So we've mounted it on a wooden backboard there just so we could uh, mount all the auxiliary equipment uh, next to it here. Uh, luckily the owner did have a, a Venner Auto Whaler in their collection so they've provided that which I've hooked on so we will be able to make Sirens uh, Whale on this panel now. Um, and also as they requested there's an H661 key um, isolator there so without that key being inserted um, the air raid siren won't be able to be uh, started on this panel. So on the inside, um, obviously we've had a nice good tidy up in there. We've not got all the uh, cut off cables hanging out anymore. So in a minute, I've just put 240 volt onto the blue phase there. So that's going to power up our siren contactor. Uh, that's also going to power the um, auto whaler, which was uh, marked as push button. So that's on the uh, blue phase as well. And as I say, we've just wired that um, isolation key switch in line with that. So uh, without that being on, the auto whaler won't be able to be powered. Um, I've also just for now put a short across there to the red phase as well. So we'll just be able to power up the uh, heater switch side of things. Uh, and what we've done on there, we've just put a little uh, 240 volt lamp on the bottom there, which will just represent the um, heater plates being engaged just for the display. Okay, so we've got the panel uh, powered up now just on the uh, little RCD supply there. Unfortunately, the original pilot lamp, the uh, bulb had blown inside of that, and that's not one I've got a, a spare of in stock, so that's something I'll have to uh, pop in there a bit later on. But we should be able to see uh, when we turn the heater on, we've just got that the little lamp comes on there showing us it's live there. So we'll just key it up, and we should be able to do uh, a quick siren test on it.